Hello YouTube, Jerry Kirkpatrick here. And just after Christmas, I purchased a hoist that will replace my old come along that I have hanging in the rafters here uh, that I use for pulling engines and lifting the midget when I need to get it up off of the floor onto a dolly uh, to do some work on that. Um, I want this to be dual purpose. I want it to be up in the rafters so I can pull engines and stuff, lift things here in the shop. Uh, but I also want to be able to remove it, slide it off of a um, cradle that I'll have up there and then be able to use it anywhere else on the property actually, uh, mainly to pull cars up and off of the, uh, of the four post hoist. So after Christmas I had quite a few projects to do, but I took some time and drew up some plans, some uh, drawings on the two pieces that I'll be ba making. Uh, one of them will be going up on the rafter itself, lagged in with four uh, 3 3/8 lag screws. And then another separate piece that will be bolted to the top of the hoist. Uh, and with two sets of angle iron, one hanging down and out on two sides, will be up on the, uh, the main beam going across the, the shop here and then the one that will be mounted on the top of the hoist will have an arrangement and then two pieces of angle iron that go up and out and those will slide in one another purchase and then there will be a pin that will not allow the hoist to slide off so if I'm manipulating a motor, especially when I'm putting it in, sometimes you have to push it back a little bit after you get the transmission under the tunnel to let the front portion down. I don't want that mechanism um, to have the opportunity to disengage, so it will be pinned in place. So in this first portion of the video, uh, portion one, uh, I'll be building the mechanism that will be going up on the beam and then in the second video I'll be making the portion that will be bolted to the top of this. So with all that said, let's get to cutting and drilling some parts.
So here we have all of the parts necessary to build this uh, up, upper section. And you may have noticed that it has a odd uh, hole pattern here. Uh, when I first laid this out, I put them up against the beam that runs the length of the shop. And it just so happened that the first layout that I had the lag screws would be going right between the two, two laminates of the beam. So I moved them so they would be screwing into a major portion of the beam. So that's why these holes are in this arrangement. And these will be the last pieces that go onto this whole arrangement with it upside down. Well, it'll actually be right side up. Everything that I'm doing here is upside down, is the bottom portion. So we also have uh, some little gussets, I guess you could call them, um, that will keep these pieces of angle iron that'll be sitting like this from spreading and allowing the uh, other two pieces of angle iron to spread these and allow the, the hoist itself to drop. And the two pieces of angle iron will be welded in uh, approximately right here, about a half inch. And I'll be showing you that shortly. So the first thing we have is the pin and that will be welded right in here. There's a piece on the other portion that will, uh, with a hole in it that will slide over this pin and then this hairpin will be put in place. So I want to keep this out a little over a quarter of an inch. So I've just got a bunch of washers here. that gives me the distance from the pin to that uh, quarter inch plus a little bit. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to mark all the way around this. So I know where the minimum stick out is. So in order to place that, I'm going to clamp the piece to the table. If I put this block here, steel on steel moves slightly. So I'm just going to put a piece of paper down, lay this block of steel there, and I've already figured out what will make this pin the right distance from the edge, uh, from this edge here. So I cut this piece to create the center here. I'm going to line up my major distance pin, uh, line here. Put that there. Clamp that. I'm going to place a piece of stainless steel wire in here. And rotate it. Until it's level. That way the hole in the end of this pin is horizontal or parallel with the top surface here. So with everything in place, I'm going to put just a short uh, small TIG weld at the back here. So it's 
base and put another small tack.
gussets. And the distance for those So to put the straps on, uh, off camera, I have made a mark on all four places where the straps are going to go. They are back one quarter of an inch with the straps, their quarter inch, that'll put me back one half inch and the width of the beam is five inches wide so taking a half off of here half off of here that's an inch when these straps are welded on that will give me five inches in between to slide up onto the onto the beam in order to put these in the right place the same as these gussets here right where the the piece the center of the strap will be mounted will be at an inch and a half no an inch and a quarter and five and a half 
I'll make that same mark on the other side. So I'm going to take a heavy block, put it up here, put a strap on. Clamp it. And I'm making sure that the end of the uh, vice grip here is on the table so it won't affect the, you know, it won't rock any of these pieces. And I just move this back until I'm parallel and this line is on center of the five and a half inch and all the way around. Now I can put a tack on a couple of corners. piece all tacked up ready to go first thing I'm going to do is spray it down with nozzle spray I always spray everything I'm going to MIG weld with nozzle spray that way when I get finished welding the the little balls all the spatter just wipes right off. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie these ends off, all four of them. Actually eight because I'll turn it over and do the other side. A short bead here and then down eh, between a quarter and a half inch. Now I'm ready to weld the sides complete. You notice there's spatter on here. It's just that easy to take it off if you spray first with nozzle spray. They just pop right off. Next is the pin. Then we can start welding these here. I think I'm going to do it this way. Okay. I don't like 
making a complete weld, a, a weld all the way the length of the piece, uh, mainly because if you start a crack, that crack will follow the, the complete length of the weld. So I like uh, skipping an area so if a weld starts to break, it's not going to continue. First thing I'm going to do is tie these off. For some nozzle spray. fill in between these welds and make sure that they don't touch. Now for the gussets. When I start getting a ring of spatter around the uh, cup here, I stop and get that off. If you keep welding and allow this ring to build up until it touches the contact tip, then the cup is energized it's getting the same electricity as the wire and if you touch anything to a ground it's going to short out here so maintain an exceptionally clean tip Now for side two. Figured beans I was there, may as well finish it up. There it is. See how this flag just pops right off if you spray first with nozzle spray. Even these big ones here, just off they come. Except that one. Grinder will take care of that. Okay. Let's get some paint on this thing. So here is the bracket complete. And I know some of you were wondering why the odd layout of these two straps. Well, <clears throat> If you look at the bottom of the hoist, there's a set of holes here and a set of holes here. 
and those are centered on the, the cable itself where most of the work is going to be done. Uh, these two sets of holes back here are about as useless as the left front wheel on a sprint car or midget. And everybody knows that the only reason a sprint car and midget has a left front wheel is so they don't fall over in the pits. So that is the reason for the layout of these two straps. And these will go up on the beam. And my next project, the next one that you'll be seeing, is the layout and fabrication of the piece that'll go onto, which would be the top of the hoist itself. And that will slide right into these two channels and be affixed by the pin. And next, I would like to thank uh, Ron Covell for getting me hooked up with a company back east, back in Michigan, that allows me uh, the opportunity to sell my bead roller plans with the DVD and my radius turning tool with the DVD on my website now and all over the world. Uh, it used to be that I could only sell in the United States uh, because of my PayPal account. Uh, but thanks to Ron, I got hooked up with a company so now anybody in the world can purchase either the bead roller or radius turning tool plans with DVD and they are downloadable on my website and there will be a link uh, below here to my website so you can pick up the, the plans if you desire. Um, while I had to hire a tech guy, a guy that knows computer stuff, and uh, while he was hooking up uh, my plans and DVDs to this company back in Michigan that allows me to, uh, to sell these internationally, uh, I just mentioned that I would like to also get hooked up with Patreon. And while I was explaining, um, you know, what I would be doing with it and what it would be doing for me, almost immediately he said, okay, what's the picture you want? I mean, the guy, before I could almost finish the sentence, he had, hook, had me hooked up with uh, Patreon. So, in that, uh, at the end of each video, you'll see right down here uh, a little square that says Patreon. If you like what I'm doing, if you like to, would like to support the channel, uh, get me some new camera upgrades, uh, audio, um, things like that, anything that I get will be going right back into the channel. So uh, at the end, you'll see something that looks exactly like this. So just click on it and you can hook up with Patreon. So that's all I have for now. Um, stay tuned. The next one will be making the top portion of this which will mate to the piece that's up in the rafters. Thanks a lot. Bye.